Most of you have heard or maybe read that these old Mercedes diesel engines will go a million miles. Well, I, I beg to differ <laughs> because I've seen a lot of them that have not gone a million miles and it's always due to neglect. Now, granted, they are mechanical and there's always the chance that something mechanical could happen. But if you want one of these to go a million miles, you can't just drive it and ignore it, okay? There are certain things that you have to do to keep these engines healthy. Now, I'm going to talk in this video about preventing catastrophic engine failure. And by catastrophic engine failure, I mean something ha happens to the engine where it seizes up. And there are usually three things that I have found cause catastrophic engine failure. We're not talking about wearing out the engine or other problems related to poor running or poor performance. We're talking about catastrophic failure here. Number one, loss of coolant. If you lose coolant and you don't shut the engine down soon enough, you will overheat it and you could actually seize it, especially if you're driving at freeway speed. Now, the best way to prevent overheating an engine is watch the belts and hoses. You know, the, the belts that drive the water pump, the hoses that move the coolant around inside the engine. If you neglect those and they fail and you're on the freeway on these old diesels, you don't have this computer warning that comes up and says, hey, you're overheating. You've got to be watching the gauge all the time. So that's kind of an obvious one, and most people know they got to keep an eye on, on their belts and hoses, change them at least every you know, 100,000 miles or less, depending upon your driving habits. But there are two other areas that I've seen cause catastrophic engine failure, and I want to go over those in a little more detail in this video. Number two is loss of the timing chain. If this timing chain breaks, while the engine's running, particularly at speed, you'll have pistons hit the valves. I've even seen the camshaft break or the towers of the camshaft get shoved right up through the valve cover. So this really is a catastrophic failure when the timing chain breaks. Now, how long do these timing chains last? I, my humble opinion is 150 to 180,000 miles. You should maybe look at changing the chain. When they start to wear, you'll get loss of power, loss of performance, because it'll change the internal timing of the engine. But when they break, uh, boy, you're talking probably getting a new engine or a replacement engine, because I've seen people try to fix them, but you're gonna have other stresses on the crankshaft. You gotta be really careful about having some shop repair an engine where you've had timing chain failure depends a lot on how fast the engine's running when it happens. Now there's ways to check how badly worn the chain is. I'm not going to go over those in my video. I have a manual, a performance tuning manual on my website which talks specifically about the steps to checking. Uh, if you've been around these, sometimes you can lift the chain. Say if it's really badly worn you'll be able to lift the chain off the sprocket about a quarter of an inch right here at the top, and that's a real bad sign. But there's a more accurate way of doing it by checking the timing marks between counterbalance and the camshaft marks here. I wanna show you what a new timing chain looks like so that you can see just how long it is. Okay, look at this. Now that's how long the new chain is. So you can, you can kind of imagine after, let's say 200,000 miles, every single one of these links will wear a little bit. So over a period of time, I've seen a worn chain move about an inch. If you take it like this and move it in and then move it out laying on a flat surface, I saw an inch of play over the entire length of the chain. And that's where it's going to approach, you know, separating or breaking. So. The chain is very important on these high mileage engines to preventing catastrophic failure. Now, I have a chain kit on my website which comes with complete instructions. You do not need to take the engine apart. You do not need to take the head off. You can roll the new chain in using a procedure that I describe in my manual. So this is something you should be concerned about and consider 
if you have an engine that's you know close to 200,000 miles or more and you have no record that the chain has been changed at least go through the procedure of checking for the amount of stretch that your chain currently has the third primary reason for catastrophic engine failure on these old diesels is loss of engine oil now it's obvious if you don't check your oil these diesels do use oil and they do leak oil so you need to check your engine oil on a regular basis i've seen one case where somebody loaned their diesel out to somebody, they never checked the oil and it finally just started clanking away with a rod knock. I can't feel sorry for you if you lose an engine uh, due to not checking your oil level on a regular basis. But I'm gonna talk about rapid loss of oil in these engines. There's a few places where you can get rapid loss of engine oil. If that happens and you don't catch your oil pressure gauge dropping to zero while you're driving at speed, you can have catastrophic engine failure. The first is right here with the oil filter housing and particularly the oil cap. I've seen two instances where somebody had an oil change and either the cap wasn't tightened properly or they put two O-rings, one O-ring on over the other and the person drove away and the oil leaked out of the filter housing at such a rate that before he caught it, he lost all his engine oil. Another reason why you want to do your own oil changes and be very careful. Always replace this O-ring, but be very careful that you take the old one out and make sure that you don't forget to tighten these bolts. I think what, what happens is people will be working on their oil change. They'll put these two nuts on and think, oh, I'll come back and tighten them with a wrench and then they get distracted doing something else and forget to tighten those two bolts and off they go and I'm going to say just as a hint here anytime you do an oil change or anytime you have somebody else do an oil change you start the car in the parking lot or at the shop or in your driveway you let it run for a couple minutes and you get under the car and you look if you see oil dripping out around this oil filter housing, you know something wasn't done properly. Along with the oil filter housing, you have the oil cooler, which is mounted next to the radiator. I've seen the oil coolers fail, which will lead to rapid engine oil loss. You need to kind of keep an eye on the oil cooler. I don't have one to show in this video, but it's right up on this side of, of the radiator. You know, look for wetness, look for drips at the bottom of the oil cooler. But I think the primary reason I've seen catastrophic engine failure due to rapid loss of engine oil is the oil cooler hoses. Now, there's two of them, and they bolt on right here to the oil filter housing. Now, one of the reasons this is a problem, you have so much oil, such a high volume of oil going through these hoses, that if they crack, break, or loosen up, you can lose three or four quarts of oil in a very, very short period of time. Now we recommend you replace the hoses. These ones have been cut, but look for wetness around the fittings. Look for wetness around the hose. And you can even grab a hold of this and see if they rotate. If they do, and you see that those signs, you should replace these hoses. I think you should be re replacing the hoses every 150,000 miles if, if you have no record of them having been done. Now, we carry a quality German-made replacement hose on our website. We may be the last supplier of German-made hoses out there. I've seen some aftermarket ones that are really bad. They don't even fit right. Now, these aren't particularly easy to put on. Uh, you've got to route them underneath this motor mount arm and uh, disconnect them both from the cooler and from these fittings here on the side of the oil filter housing. Uh, and it can be a real pain. So we've come up with a wrench set. If you watch any of my other videos, you know we carry this wrench set, which will al allow you to get down in here and, and get these oil cooler lines off. You need, you need to be able to hold this fitting with this one, see like that, and then you use this this special wrench which we make here right in my shop that goes over the line like this and allows you to loosen up this nut. So if you're going to replace the oil cooler hoses, do not buy cheap aftermarket ones and you're going to need the wrench set or you will end up 
pulling your hair out, okay? I'm just warning you. I know it looks like I'm trying to sell something, but sometimes you have to buy something if you want to fix something properly. And that's the case with these oil cooler hoses. So that covers, you know, the three key reasons why I see catastrophic engine failures with these diesel engines. So pay attention to those three areas with your own engine. Now, some of you have been hearing a funny background noise during the filming of this video or this video series. Well, it's raining in the Pacific Northwest. Look, it's raining real hard. We've had a very hot, dry summer, and suddenly we're just getting blasted by rain, and it's only the 3rd of September. So I don't know. This has kind of affected my performance today. You'll see at the end of this video, I think the heavy rain, maybe the atmospheric pressure uh, caught me off my game, okay? So I apologize for that. Now I'm going to talk in this video about preventive cat, prevent. So there are three reasons I have seen over the years while 